presentation of Fox Sports. We are Black Mark. We are Detroit. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. To say that Nick Castellanos is in a zone would be an understatement. After a big road trip, Castellanos hitting 383 and leading the American League. Nick will bring the bat into play tonight as we welcome into Comerica Park. It is game one in this weekend series, the Rangers and the Detroit Tigers. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba alongside Rod Allen. Glad you are with us here tonight for game one of the series. Tigers back home for just three, Rod, but maybe that will help them forget all about Cleveland. Well, Cleveland was really rough on the boys, but uh, this is uh, a Texas Rangers team. They also lost three games in a row, so something's got to give here today. But hopefully the Tigers can come out here and play much better baseball here at home. They really need to do so. Well, we knew this. It's going to be a terrific pitching matchup tonight. We'll start with the Tigers. Jordan Zimmerman coming off an unbelievable month of April. Hopefully that will translate into the month of May. Well, he was pitcher of the month uh, in the American League, and I just love the way that he goes about his business. He brings his lunch pail uh, to work every single day. So if you're opposing him, you better bring, you bring your lunch pail because he's going to be out there for a while. 64% this year, first pitch strikes, and then he just expands the strike zone with a mixture of cut fastballs, backdoor breaking balls, an occasional curveball. Hasn't needed many changes, but Zimmerman has been tremendous uh, this year, and the Tigers will need him today if they're going to get a victory. All right, last July, the Rangers made a trade for Cole Hamels, and all he's done since putting on a Rangers uniform is win. He's been awfully good. You know, in 17 of his starts, uh, the Rangers have come away with victories in 14 of them. He's got a fastball that gets up to 94 miles an hour. He's pitching inside a lot these days to the right-handers, which opens up the outside part of the plate with that changeup. He has walked quite a few this year, 15 in his five starts. So we'll look for that today, but he has punched out 27. It'll be a tall task for both of these offenses today because you've got a couple of undefeated pitchers on the mound. All right, after a short break, we'll send you back to the Call Sam Studios, check in with Matt Shepard. Coming up in this one here tonight, a former Ranger trying to do some damage against Texas, and that's Ian Kinsler, 375 lifetime against the Rangers. Tigers in Texas coming up next.
Martin Zimmerman racing to the mound to get set to make another start. He is a perfect 5 and 0 this season. Here are the particulars on Mr. Zimmerman presented tonight by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Outstanding uh, debut in the first month for his new team. As a matter of fact, he was pitcher of the month in the American League. Zimmerman has a fastball that gets up to 94 miles an hour. He also has a curveball he'll use against the left-handers. He also has a real nice tight slider, and because of those three pitches, he's piled up some nice numbers. Here's the starting lineup he will face tonight, presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. For Jeff Bannister and the Rangers, it is Rudnet Odor leading it off at second base. Nomar Mazzara, one of the top rookies in all of baseball in right field. Beltre at third. Fielder is the DH. Desmond Moreland and then Andrews, Bobby Wilson, and Delino DeShields rounding it out for the Texas Rangers. Let's take a look at the starting defense presented by Beaumont Health. Left to right, you have Upton, you have Ghost, you have Avilas in right field. J.D. Martinez getting the start of this one off, his first off day of the year. Iglesias Kinsler up the middle, Castellanos and Cabrera on the corners, and James McCann back in there today after having last night off in Cleveland. What a spectacular night for baseball here in the Motor City tonight. The Tigers are back home for just a short three-game series. The Rangers in town over the weekend. And Rugnad Odor leading it off for the Texas Rangers. Odor batting 273 in the first pitch is outside 1-0. Yeah, since they put him in that leadoff spot about seven games, Odor has been going off. Uh, he can get you a run in a hurry in that leadoff spot. He's got some pop. There's a bouncer hit to the first baseman straight at Miguel Cabrera and one gone in the Texas first. And we'll bring up Nomar Mazzara. Looking forward to seeing this young man play, Rod, because he has gotten off to a lights out start. Heard some great things about him, Mario. As a matter of fact, the Texas Rangers, they knew he would be good. They gave him a $5 million signing bonus when he was 16 years old out of Dominican Republic. And he has not disappointed anybody, any of his steps of the way to getting to the movies. He is hit safely in seven consecutive games. A wide open stance from the left side. He looks at strike one. He looks the part too, buddy. He is six feet four inches, 215 pounds with great power and a great throwing arm in the outfield. The American League Rookie of the Month in the month of April. He put up terrific numbers. In his first 22 career games in Rangers history since 1972, He's had the most hits. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Foul ground, third base side. Castellanos will get there for the out. Two up, two down. The thing that I love about Zimmerman is the fact that he gets ahead of most of his hitters, and then once he gets ahead of the hitters, he attacks them upstairs with good fastballs. Look at this four-seam fastball upstairs. It tailed back over the heart of the plate, but Mazzaro couldn't get to it. And that particular area up and in is where a lot of pitchers are starting to pitch these days. Great, great location there. So two outs here is Adrian Beltre. Oh, he's the Tiger killer. Rangers have lost three straight, like the Tigers. So these are two teams trying to get it turned around. Beltre's had a lot of games in the big leagues, a lot of hits. He's batting 278. And a bouncing ball to short. Sprawling stop there, Iglesias. Nice play. And a 1 2 3 inning for Jordan Zimmerman with a little help from Iggy.
no score as we go to the bottom of the first. Ian Kinsler set to lead things off. Starting lineup for the Tigers presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. It'll be Kinsler, Avilas, and Cabrera in the top three spots. Martinez, Upton, Castellanos. Justin Upton's gotten hot, and that's good. McCann, Ghosts, and Iglesias rounded out for Brad Osmus tonight. J.D. Martinez gets the night off, and Mike Avilas will play some right field and bat in his two spot this evening. Here is Kinsler trying to get it going now, facing Cole Hamels. And the first one is fouled back out of play. Ian on the road trip was 3 for 25, so his average has dipped below 300. It's at 295 coming into play. Hamels, the veteran lefty, is 32 years old out of San Diego, California. One ball and one strike. And Cole Hamill making his sixth start here tonight at Comerica Park. He's already won three games. The ERA sits at 3-3-0. He's got a fastball that tops out at about 94. He'll cut fastballs inside as well to the right-handers, but his bread and butter uh, is that changeup. He has had a great changeup since coming to the big leagues a decade ago. Kinsler hits one in the air to shallow right field. That ball slicing. It's going to drop. Base hit. Leadoff single for Kinsler. Let's take a look at the Texas Rangers starting defense brought to you by Tim Hortons. Uh, in the outfield, they have Desmond DeShields Mazzara, uh, Andrews and Odor up the middle. They've got Beltre and Moreland on the corner. And the former Tiger, just a week ago, <laughs> Bobby Wilson is the catcher here tonight. <laughs> it's been kind of a yo yo season for him, hasn't it? Yeah, just a week ago, he was catching the Major League debut of the youngster Michael Fulmer. Here's Mike Avilas in the two spot. He shortens to bunt and takes a strike. And one of the reasons why Avilas is in there tonight is one, uh, Brad wants to get him going because he and Romine have not gotten a chance uh, to play all that often. And two, he's got great numbers against Cole Hamels. That is in for a strike and now quickly 0-2. Avilas is three for five against Cole Hamels. Swing and a miss. Not that time, though. He goes down on three pitches, one out. Here's what he likes to get to after he's gotten ahead of you. It's a changeup. I mean, it's a really good changeup. It's not a circle change. It's pretty much straight. Comes out of his hand like a four-seam fastball. Very deceptive and very difficult for the hitters to pick up. He also throws that change up a lot more uh, to the right handed batters than to the left handed batters as you could imagine. Miguel Cabrera will look at a strike fastball to 93 that time from Hamels. Miggy at 269 with four home runs this year. Had his nine game hitting streak ended. And the finale in Cleveland. Swing and a miss. Good curveball there at 78 miles an hour. First pitch, four seam fastball at 93. Then he comes back with a really good bender at 78. So we've seen uh, his three best pitches the fastball, the breaking ball, and the changeup already here in the first. Runner goes. Ball high. Wilson's throw is not in time. It bangs off of the. Runner Kinsler down there at second base. Steal for Ian Kinsler, and that is his 200th career stolen base. He got a great jump. He went on first movement. As soon as Hamels, the pitcher, made any movement with his body whatsoever, Kinsler was off and running, and he guessed correctly, therefore able to steal that bag rather easily. The ball actually came out of the glove of Odor. So a milestone steal for Mr. Kinsler. He's in scoring position now for Cabrera. Miggy sends a chopper to the right side. Easy hop there for Moreland. Two gone. Advance the runner to third. Here are the field conditions tonight presented by Ace Hardware and the Scotts Company. It is absolutely gorgeous here tonight. 68 degrees at game time. Mostly clear. I would uh, venture to say the nicest day we've had or night for baseball here at Comerica so far. Uh, this has been one of the nicest nights that we've had for baseball anywhere. Very true. 
And uh, the ballpark looking gorgeous as it does every single night. Here's Victor Martinez. Vic on a hot streak right now, batting 337. Martinez has hit safely in his last six. No shift on Victor batting right handed. Cole Hamels has had Victor Martinez's career in their meetings so far. He is two for 14 as Victor in his career against Hamels. Martinez came in batting 337. Tigers have two of the top three hitters in the American League. Castellanos leads the way, and Victor is third. Swing and a miss. Tied him up. A cut fastball at 90 miles an hour. Lead off single by Kinsler. He's at third now with two outs. And the 0-2. Would not chase the fastball up. One ball, two strikes on Martinez. With two strikes, Hamels likes to go to either his curveball or either uh, that changeup down and away from the right-handed batters. One and two, the count stays. That cut fastball that the Hamels is featuring at 89 to 91 miles an hour has got some real nice movement in on the hands of the right-handed batter. And blocked there by Wilson. Two balls and two strikes. A nice job there by Victor laying off that changeup. Victor pretty good with two strikes. 310 batting average. Yeah, the major league average is probably about 230, 240. He's well above that. In the air toward left field. Ian Desmond in the sunlight makes the catch, and the Tigers are turned back in the first. Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be when it's time. Come to Comerica. The all-new 2017 Chrysler Pacifica. And by Kroger. Back here at Comerica on a nice night for ball in downtown Detroit. We go to the second. And Prince Fielder leads it off for the Rangers. It'll be Fielder, Desmond, and Mitch Moreland. Jordan Zimmerman a snappy and I mean snappy first inning seven pitches to get him one two three. Slowly roll toward third Castellanos going to play it and throw him out. 
The cue shot right off the end of the bat of Prince Fielder. One gone here is Ian Desmond. Ian Desmond, he knows what to expect uh, from his former teammate Jordan Zimmerman. Uh, he played shortstop for six years behind Zimmerman uh, with the Washington Nationals, so he knows that uh, Zimmerman's going to throw a lot of strikes and throws a lot of first pitch strikes. More than likely, Desmond will be swinging. Foul down the right field line. Desmond making the transition to the outfield this year for the Rangers played pretty much exclusively shortstop for the Washington Nationals. Good athlete. He's made the transition smoothly. Yeah, he even got a start in center field yesterday. And he has uh, really not had all that much difficulty. That's up and in 1 1. I love the way that uh, and Jordan likes to go up and in to the right handers and to the left handers with that outstanding command that he's had all season. Bouncing ball left side Castellanos deep behind the bag one hop throw is in time for the out. Real nice footwork there by Nicholas Castellanos. Jeff Bannister might want to look at this we'll see. You don't have a lot of time to decide what you want to do but he elected to go back two or three steps he got himself that Sunday hop and then he bounced it across the diamond to McGill and they appeared to get uh, Ian Desmond just by an eyelash. Yeah, he's out. Last so, three outs have gone to Cassiano. No challenge on the play. Here is Mitch Moreland. Shift is on for Moreland, who bats 250 coming into play tonight. Last time Prince Fielder was up, they had Castellanos who stayed home, and Iglesias went over into this area along with Ian Kinzer. But this time, they elect to put Iglesias at the third base position. I wonder why Brad elects sometimes to leave Iglesias there and then sometimes send Castellanos over into right field. I think it has a lot to do with the speed of the runner, or whether he'll bunt or not. Maybe exactly. You want uh, who is considered uh, maybe a little bit of a better athlete. Now there's a base hit to left, so Ooh, the shift didn't matter. That's the thing of beauty there by Moreland. And he gets shifted on about 81% of his plate appearances, and very seldom does he even hit the ball in that direction. That's the only the third time he's done it this year. He just poked it out there, didn't he? Well, I just wonder why more don't do it. Right. I mean, not that it's the easiest thing in the world to place the ball where you want to place it, but a big league hitter should have that ability. Moreland is on now with two outs. Here is Elvis Andrews. Andrews off to a pretty good start offensively, batting 293. No homers, but he's driven in 13. Elvis Andrews, uh, even though he's been in the big leagues a little bit longer than some of the kids like Correa and Lindor and Iglesias, he is one of those really good shortstops in this league that we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. The 0 1. There's a base hit to right center field. It'll get down and it's going to get by Avilas all the way to the warning track. This might score a run. Here is Moreland coming home. Throw to the plate and he is safe. Oh, why did Mickey cut it? They might have had a shot at him, look like. Did you see that? Mickey ended up on the seat of his pants. Yeah, Mickey jumped up to cut it to maybe get the out at third base and it went off the tip of his glove, but it looked like it was going to be a play at home. Now you got Moreland rounding the bag. The throw comes from Ian Kinsler. Where is he right now? You see where he is now. Mickey's going to cut the ball right now. It tipped his glove. It would have been close. I got to be honest. I think it would have been more than close. I think it would have gotten him. Think so? I think so. I mean, uh, Mickey's upset with himself. Yeah. That's a double and an RBI. He advances on the throw. So the Rangers doing something that most could not do against Zimmerman, and that's score. One run on two hits here in the second inning with two outs. Andrews gets his 14th RBI. One ball, one strike. 
You know, the Rangers, uh, they have been a challenge team on the road, but off to a nice start here today with one run on the board in the second inning. Swing and a miss. Here's the other thing, Ron. Did you think that Avilas had a chance to at least stop that ball in right field? Uh, he was playing shallow, and uh, the ball shot past him. Uh, he didn't take the best route to that ball, and had he taken a better route, he might have been able to do that, but Ghost was able to get over there and didn't cut it off. Here's the one two. Outside did not offer two and two but where Evilas was playing against Andrews very shallow in right field as soon as that ball hit the grass I knew it was going to get by him. So the Rangers who've had trouble scoring runs on the road get an early one here tonight. It's fouled back out of play. Two and two on Bobby Wilson. Start of the year as a Ranger, then was dealt to the Tigers, and the Tigers dealt him right back to the Rangers. It's been a, a very eventful month of April, and now into May for Bobby Wilson. Yeah, Rangers have had a revolving door regarding their catchers in the month of April. And the reason why they wanted to reacquire a Wilson is the fact that he spent the last month or two in a Rangers uniform last year, and he was in spring training all spring with the Rangers, so he knew that staff. So they had a chance to reacquire somebody that was familiar with their pitching staff. So they went after Wilson again. Makes sense. Veteran guy, absolutely. Little pop up foul back out of play. Here's the other thing: when you trade a player mid-season, you face that player again, and now you got to change all your signs, which Brad Ausmus said. Before the game they've had to do because obviously Bobby would know all of the signs. And so they have. Uh, restructured those. <laughs> Some of the players were just starting to get to know the signs they had That's exactly what he said too. There's a the soft line drive to left he went out and got it and ends up with an RBI single. So Wilson drives one in to make it two nothing Texas. You know one of the things that has kind of hampered the Tigers all season long is we get a look at Wilson going down to get this breaking ball and basically picking it up off the dirt. The ball's outside and he hits it back to the pool field for a two out knock. But the Tigers it's been troublesome this year. They've given up a lot of runs this year after two were out. And they've done it again here. They got a couple of quick round ball outs. But then a single by Moreland, a double by Andrews, and a base hit for Wilson. Here is Delino De Shields. All started with Moreland beating that shift with two strikes. Yeah, good point. They gave him the entire left side of the infield, and he took it. De Shields at 236. One ball and one strike. His father played in the big leagues as well. Delino De Shield, second baseman, had a really nice big league career. His father right now is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Triple A manager at Louisville in the Reds organization. Here's the one-one pitch. Foul back out of play. He comes from an athletic family. He has a brother that plays, also has a sister that plays sports. Well his dad who by the way was also a first round pick was a dynamic player. Spent the majority of his career in the Montreal Expo system. One and two on to Shields. Swing and a miss down he goes and Zimmerman ends up with his first strike out of the game. Now before the Rangers get a pair.
The most consecutive starts without a loss. Well, Cole Hamill's 15 consecutive starts. Wow. Outstanding. This is uh, in team history since 72 for the Rangers. He has since he was traded to Texas done nothing but win for them. You know you and I were talking about this uh, before the game started. Is the fact that the Rangers made the deal for Cole Hamels last year the trade deadline. And they were a couple of games under 500 at the time. And seven games out of first place but still made the deal for him. Well tremendous foresight apparently I mean it was a team that was floundering and, and I remember when that deal was made a lot of people said why the Rangers Yeah, they had him going everywhere but Texas and but Texas ended up getting into the postseason and they also have Cole Hamels under control until after the 2019 season so I believe that was as much of it the deal as it was getting it at the time they knew they had him for the future sure well he also threw the Clinching game for them at the end of the season as Upton looks at a strike. Cole Hamels was the last pitcher to defeat your guy out in Chicago. Arietta. Arietta. Nobody's beaten him since. Last guy to beat Jake Arietta. He needed a no hitter to beat him. Here's the one, two. <laughs> I guess that's the only way you can beat Arietta. <laughs> you got to throw a no hitter. Yes, indeed. Well, it's funny how it did work out because. Hamels threw a complete game three hitter to clinch the West against the Angels. That was the final day of the regular season last year. Mm. So that trade turned out to be one that turned their season around. Upton slices one toward right field. And Mazzara makes the catch one gone. By the way, stay tuned to Tigers Live following the game. We select the Fox Sports Detroit Tigers player of the game presented by McDonald's. Stop by for your breakfast favorites. Now being served all day. One gone for Nick Castellanos, the hottest hitter in baseball right now. Castellanos at 383. And not only hitting for average, but also hitting for a lot of extra base power. What? That's a strike on the inside part of the plate. You'll see Cole do that a lot here today. Yeah, first pitch curveball is not afraid to do that and usually when he does throw that curveball uh, to start off the right handed batters he throws it for a strike. One of the things that Brad has said about Castellanos and his improvement this year is he has learned to lay off of that breaking ball out of the strike zone which many times last year he would go fishing for I guess right handed pitching that is. There's a shot to right field but Mazzara is there for that one as well two gone. Three straight fly ball outs now for Cole Hamels. Here's James McCann. McCann got the night off last night in the finale in Cleveland. Back in there tonight. McCann walking around the locker room today with a Captain America t shirt on. He was. <laughs> And he can fill it out pretty good, can he? <laughs> yes, he does have a nice body. He's a big, strong, physical guy. One ball, no strikes on McCann. He leaned up a little bit this year, though. He's a little bulkier, a little, a little bigger last year, I thought. A little bit more muscular. Hamels 1-0 is low. 2-0 the count. I remember uh, James was talking about he changed his diet in spring training. Started eating a little bit healthier. Leaned up a little bit. Still has a lot of strength. Here's the 2 0. Drill to left field on a line, and Desmond struggles with it but makes the play. Hit it hard, but three fly ball outs here in the second for Cole Hamels, and the Tigers go 1 2 3.
Here as we go to the top of the third, here is the Chevy Silverado most dependable player. And of course, it has been Jordan Zimmerman who really had an outstanding month of April, the American League Pitcher of the Month in April. 24 in the third innings before he gave up his first run to start the season. Well, the uh, Rangers got to him for a couple of two out runs in the second. And they will send their leadoff man, Rupnet Odor, to the plate here in the third. Odor, good fastball hitter. And be careful if you do throw him a fastball. It's a good choice there by Jordan, starting him off with a breaking ball. But he missed with it. 270 batting average for Odor. Take a ball high, 2-0. Oh. Odor's kind of made the uh, Texas Rangers forget about that kid with the jerks and profile. Right. He's playing in the minor leagues, though. He is. Yeah, finally. Injuries have been a problem. There's a high fly ball slicing to foul ground. And nice play by Avilas, who ran a long way to get to that ball. What a play. Man, oh, man, I didn't think he had a shot. I was watching Ian Kinsler because I knew Avilas wasn't going to get there, but out of nowhere, he came in and made a really nice play. He has not played a lot of right field. He never gave up on it. Nice grab. Not only did he cover a lot of ground, but he had to maintain that concentration with the railing coming up on him. I thought the only guy that had a shot like you was Kinsler, but it was Avilas. One away now for Mazzara. A little bit low on outside, one ball, no strikes. Mazzara popped up in his first at bat. And skies one in the air to center field. You can tell he's got some pop in that bat. <laughs> Different sound even though he popped it up. Two gone. Time for a game break now. And Justin White. Well, how about those Cubs? Man, that team is no joke, man. They're 22 and 6, I believe, man. And you made a good point the other night. They're without Kyle Schwarber, who uh, tore up his knee a while ago, and they're, they haven't missed anything offensively. And they are just clicking on all cylinders. Here's a pop up, shallow right field. Kinsler drifting back. And it's Avilas who makes the catch at the very last second. One, two, three, third for Jordan Zimmerman. So wear pink to the ballpark and support breast health awareness this Sunday when the Tigers take on these Rangers at 110. By the way, the first 10,000 women receive a pink out the park visor. Visit Tigers.com or call 866-66-TIGER for more information.
And Rod Allen has his pink tie all picked out. I do. Ready to go. It's ready to go. Tune in on Sunday to see it. I'm sure you've got yep. yours ready to roll too. Yep. I busted mine out to the head dusted off. So yep. It's ready to go. <laughs> Here's Anthony Ghost starting things off in the bottom of the third. Ghost really hasn't bunted much at all this year, but yet Adrian Beltre, the third baseman, very talented third baseman, still on the grass in the infield at his respective position. Swing and a miss. Kind of shocked too that Anthony has not bunted more because in spring training. Uh, Brad had him bunting once a game uh, during all spring training games. And once the season has begun, he really hasn't bunted at all. Goes came in batting 208. Lays off that pitch outside two and one. Well, the Rangers are uh, convinced that he still may bunt, right? And Don't usually, train. when he would bunt, he wouldn't bunt in that direction anyway. He'd go toward the second baseman. And it missed again, three and one. Hamels has walked a few this year. 16 in total base on balls issued by Hamels in his five starts. Full count on Ghost. <laughs> 2 3 and 0 for the Rangers. 0 1 0 for the Tigers as they start this three game series here at home. Then they're back on the road Monday in Washington. Goes given time. Anthony, four hits on the road trip. Hamels and uh, Wilson, the catcher, had a difficult time of getting on the same page during that uh, a sequence of signs that was given to Hamels. And you're finally settling on the curveball. And a slow tap to first base. Moreland makes the play, one out. Seven straight retired now by the veteran Cole Hamels. Hamels is attacking that uh, strike zone with a lot of quality pitches. Uh, the fastball's gotten all the way up to 93. He's also cut the fastball in on the hands of the right-handers. He's got that changeup and a good curveball. So Hamels is one of the best left-handers in our sport. Here is Iglesias. After a very hot start in the month of April, Jose has slowed a bit, just three hits on the last road trip. Jose did something there that he has not been doing a lot of this year. And that's uh, swinging at the first pitch. He's probably only swung at the first pitch 15% of the time this season. The 0 1. Chasing. And the heat up high 0 2. Hamels took a no decision in his last start. He missed the previous turn with a bit of groin soreness. But as a Ranger is 10 and 1 since that trade brought him to Arlington last year. Here's the 1 2. Well, they say that the transition for a pitcher that starts his career in the National League and then comes to the American League usually struggles. Uh, but you have a couple of guys on the mound here tonight, both guys making the transition very smoothly. And we told you that Hamels, uh, the, their team, 14 wins in his 17 starts, and of course Zimmerman, 5 and 0 in a Tigers uniform. Ah, he chased again, and Iglesias can't believe he did it. Second strikeout for Hamels. MGM Grand brings you the scouting report on Mr. Fielder and Mr. Kinsler since the trade. And of course, he has played in a few more games because of the injury to Prince. Yeah, Prince had a neck injury that pretty much took away his entire uh, 2014 season. So he has played in over 100 more games, but still uh, good numbers for Kinsler since coming over. That'll back him out of there, 1 0. Kinsler spent the First eight years of his major league career wearing a Texas Rangers uniform. Had a lot of success. A couple of World Series. Ooh, that one almost got Dave Clark. DC. Showing some of those quick feet he had in his young days as a boxer. It's 
pretty good move right there. Yep, just kind of twisted out of the way. That'll go foul down the left field line. That actually looks like a Hamill camel that Dorothy Hamill used to do <laughs> the skating rink. <laughs> I have no idea why I remember a Hamel Camel. I don't either. <laughs> what an obscure reference. Yeah. Anyway, it's <laughs> the one two. That is a nice play at first base by Moreland. They've been doing that all year, man. They got a good defensive team. One, two, three for Cole Hamels. As we go to the top of the fourth now, Prince Fielder will lead things off for Texas. They're not booing Prince Fielder here, are they? Oh, yes, they are. They booed him in his first at bat, too. Fielder, Desmond, and Moreland in the top of the fourth. And Prince checks his swing. Strike called by Larry Vanover. Did you know that uh, Prince was uh, named after the uh, uh, the Prince that just died a couple of really? weeks ago? Yeah. The musician. I didn't yep, know that. He was. That's fouled back out of play. Well, last May, Prince Fielder had 28 RBIs, tied for the most in Major League Baseball. Had a big month of May last year. Batting average not very high for Prince as we speak, but he's driven in 18, which means he's taken what the opposing teams have been giving him when runners are in scoring position. He's beat a lot of shifts this year just driving in runs with base hits. Fielder in his two years with the Tigers hit 55 home runs. He hit 300 in the Tigers uniform for the very first time. Uh, that was the year that Miguel Cabrera won the Triple Crown. He was spraying the ball all over the place. He then. was. He became a different hitter in this ballpark. The 0-2. Went up and got a pitch and popped it up. Let's see if it gets back into the seats. McCann reaching in. Look out, James. Flips into the camera well and hopefully is okay. How about that effort? Well, you said he was wearing that Captain America shirt today. That's right. He acting like Captain America. That'll draw a round of applause. Great effort. Mm, and he almost got it. Where's the helpers at? Nowhere. I think some folks were surprised he actually flipped. Again, the 0-2. And see if he tries to go back upstairs once again to get Prince to either pop up or either strike out. And change the eye level once again of Fielder. 
He's gone up there a couple of times and Prince has been able to get a piece of it. Yeah. They're going to try to go up one more time. And he got another piece of it. Prince does have some really good bat range. What he is doing right now to Zimmerman is what we watched him do in a couple of years in a Tigers uniform. Most left handers love the ball down. Prince loves it down, but he also can climb the ladder and hit a good high fastball. He's a fielder fan. And he rips that one right into the shift down to a knee Kinsler. Would have been a base hit about four or five years ago, not now with the shifts. One take, gone. Take a look at how high he climbs the ladder with his hands to hit this ball. And he hit it pretty hard, too. He got on top of that fastball. Here is Ian Desmond. We're talking about Desmond's transition to the outfield now that he's a Texas Ranger. He had talked to a couple of guys that uh, made that transition from another position to outfield, namely Rick Ankiel and Alex Gordon. Both gave him advice on how to make that transition to the outfield. That's going to slice to the corner fair ball and go up against the wall. Desmond will go to second, then he has himself a one out double. So the Rangers have another scoring chance. Desmond, we told you, played behind uh, Jordan Zimmerman in Washington for six years. And every pitch that Zimmerman has thrown to Desmond so far today, he has swung at it. He knows how much Zimmerman likes to attack uh, the strike zone. Well, getting some uh, advice from Gordon, from Gordon is uh, very valuable, obviously. Uh, Gordon turned himself in from being a, a good third baseman to a great left fielder. Yeah, that uh, that transition is probably more normal than the Rick and Keel transition, who went from the mound to the outfield. Gordon from third to the outfield. Yeah, the one thing that helps out all three of the guys that you just mentioned, Gordon and Keel, and also Desmond, all three good athletes. And Keel was a good athlete, even though he was a pitcher. Moreland had a single against the shift. In his first at bat, Castellano staying at home with a runner at second base right now. I have to admit, though, I felt uh, bad for Desmond in the offseason, though, the fact that he did not have a new team no. until basically it was late spring training. I mean, here's a kid that was a free agent and a good player in the prime of his career. But because he was tied to a draft choice, no one would offer him a contract. Had to settle on a one year deal. Well Desmond wasn't signed by the Rangers until February the 29th which is about a week and a half after players reported to spring camps and that really was not good for baseball a player of the caliber and person of a Desmond you know, still looking for a home on February 20th. One ball one strike on Mitch Moreland. He wasn't the only one though there was a few other guys tied to uh, some draft choices. Two and one. We'll see what he decides to do here with Moreland in this predict predictable fastball count. And Moreland's been swinging the bat well. Put a wrinkle in one, and the count goes to three and one. Yes, yeah, a nice take there by Moreland. And to lay off that pitch. You got an open base. And you've got a right hander in the on deck circle. Wouldn't be all bad to put Moreland on first base and play for two, even though Andrews, the on deck hitter, has decent speed. Here's the 3 1. Three and two now on Moreland. Twenty four and a third consecutive scoreless string. Earlier this year for Zimmerman as you look at his by innings pitch count up to 50 now. A couple of seven pitch innings. And he wants his catcher McCann to come out to the mound. Three and two the count. And with the runner on second base he just wants to make sure that whatever they decide to throw here. 
And that uh, Desmond, the base runner, cannot pick up the signs. We'll see if McCann even puts a sign down here or if he was verbally told by Jordan Zimmerman what the next pitch was going to be. No sign. Fouled off just barely. Mitch Moreland last year hit 23 home runs. So he has power. It's a really good look at the cut fastball that uh, and Zimmerman has been throwing all year. It's been a really good pitch for him. Grounded foul out in front of that one and roped it right down the first base line. Elvis Andrews waiting on deck. Rangers got two in the second. Moreland started that rally with a base hit and eventually scored their first run. Strike three. Moreland didn't like it. Dropped the bat and stares back at Larry Vanover. A little bit of a swing back fastball there, and Moreland may have had a beef, and that ball may have been a shade inside. Yeah, but Zimmerman will take it. Two outs, and here is Elvis Andrews. Ball one high to Andrews who doubled in a run in the second. Elvis had been three for his previous 22 before that two base hit. He went the other way with it. And shot the gap in right center. Swing and a miss one one. Andrews this year is. 458 with men in scoring position. That's third in the American League. Well, he has really come through in these situations. A little bit outside. Two balls and one strike. Is it just me? Does it look like Elvis Andrews has a bigger bat than he should be using with his frame? Let's see. I haven't noticed. I'm thinking I remember a story about him going to a little heavier bat because Odor, the second baseman, swings a heavy bat. I'll find out. But it looks like a heavy bat that he's swinging. Now, what would be the reasoning to do that? Well, more power. Yeah, usually when the bat is a little heavier, like 33, 34 ounces, it's a little bit more condensed. And so the wood's a little bit harder and balls travel a little further. If you go, say, 34, 31, 34 inch, 31 ounce bat, you know that kind of spreads it out a little bit too thin therefore you don't get the good wood the condensed wood because you're trying to lessen how much the bat weighs in the air shallow left field on the run Iglesias tough play nicely done no runs the double is stranded on our way to the bottom of the fourth.
Here's our Bell Tire pitch by pitch. Cole Hamels has been outstanding here so far today. He's had a really good breaking ball. He's had some nice cut fastballs inside about 91 miles an hour. He's also elevated the fastball. And then we phased that changeup down in the way. So all four of his pitches, he has worked beautifully here tonight through the first three innings. And Hamels back to the hill now. As Mike Avilas leads it off. It'll be Avilas Cabrera and Victor Martinez. Tigers have been limited to just one hit so far. How about that? Jack White just stopped just by the booth. Busted in, shook just our busted hand, in, man. Just walked in the door. <laughs> Call security around here. <laughs> Jack's welcome anytime. <laughs> How about that? Big, big Tiger fan. Going to the count on Avilas. And he foul tipped it into the glove. That'll be strike three. So he has punched out a couple of times. First team advantage brings you the pitcher batter matchup now with Miggy strolling in here are the career numbers against Cole Hamels. Eight for 14 for a 571 clip. Well the one thing the Tigers hitters can start to do they can start to be a little bit more aggressive on first pitches. And Cole Hamels is now eight of 12 in first pitch strikes thrown here this evening. He has retired 10 straight since allowing the leadoff single to Ian Kinsler. Way back in the first. Miggy takes ball two inside. Cabrera six hits on the recent road trip. Uh, Hamels taking too long. Miggy steps out. And it missed outside. 3 0. Hamels now has to navigate through the heart of the Tigers lineup. Cabrera, Martinez, Upton then would be next. Miggy taking all the way. 3 and 1. Hamels now has hit 50. 32 to 18 is his ratio. And a ball outside, ball four. So Cabrera is the second base runner of the night for the Tigers. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game, brought to you by Miller Lights. To be perfectly honest with you, Cole Hamels had no problem walking Miguel and then taking his chances against a couple of pretty good hitters in Victor and Upton, but he wants nothing to do with Miguel. I wouldn't either. Victor flied out in his first at bat. Just about every pitch that uh, Hamels threw Victor his first time up was inside. They go right back in there again with a good cut fastball at 92 miles an hour. Victor in his last 11 games hitting 442. Is that good? That would be beyond good. That's extra good. That one just missed inside. One ball, one strike. I know we've said it over and over, but it does bear repeating now that Martinez is healthy that Tigers really need to keep him that way the rest of the year, and this is the production they can get. You know, it also kind of validates uh, something that we've talked about for a number of years on this air is the fact that nothing you can do from a hitter standpoint if you do not have your legs underneath you. you if you don't have that good balance, if you don't have that good foundation, you just don't really have good bat speed. Can you hit the ball and put it in play? Yes. But you can't drive the ball unless you got your legs underneath you. And you could really see that in Martinez last year. Right? Oh, he was rolling over everything. And then he started to cheat because he knew he couldn't get the fastballs. Last year, Victor said, was the worst year of his life from a baseball standpoint. Here's the one two. Little bouncer towards second base. They'll shovel to Andrews, and that's all they're going to get. 
Andrews way off the bag playing around the other side Did and you think it was one out though too or not really well I don't know because with Martinez running he may have had a chance I'm thinking it was but that was a bad feed by Odor too you can just see that play develop because the shortstop Andrews was way off the bag they've already turned 44 double plays this year so they've been the best team in the big majors at turning double plays but that's just kind of real nonchalant there it looked like he was playing for one all the way well, they do get the force that'll bring up up and we'll see if the Tigers can make them pay swing and a miss Upton was looking for that first pitch fastball and something that Cole Hamels has done a lot of this year. Lots of first pitch curves. A little bit low, one ball, one strike. Upton fly to right field in his only at bat. Still only one hit allowed by Cole Hamels, the single by Kinsler in the first. Oh. On the outer edge, as Larry Vanover goes up with the right hand, Upton didn't like it. A cut fastball. He starts off the plate outside. That's why he didn't like it. It appeared to be outside. The one-two into the glove for strike three, and Hamels able to pitch around a walk. No runs, no walks, or no hits. One walk and one left on a spectacular night here at Comerica. Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Bell Tire. Get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. And by Chevrolet. More than you expect for less than you imagine. Beautiful night here in downtown Detroit. The Tigers trail the Rangers 2-0 in game one in this three-game series. Zimmerman back to the mound as we go to the fifth inning facing Bobby Wilson. Rangers got a pair of runs in the second. So far it's held up. Wilson hammers one to center field. Ghost is on the move. One gone. That'll bring up Delano to Shields. He struck out to end the second. The Shields came in batting 236. Oh. 
talking about his dad, uh, senior. Last time he was up, uh, Delano's dad was the number one pick, or a first rounder, I should say, and so was Delano DeShields Jr. Yeah, they got the very talented family. Houston selected him in the first round back in 2010. And then eventually was picked up by the Rangers as a rule five pick. Mm. It'll be interesting to see what happens when Shinsu Chu comes back for the Rangers because the rookie Mazar is playing so well. And you know Chu's going to play. Yeah, there's no question he's going to play. So it may be that the Shields could be the odd man out. Here's the 2 1. 2 and 2 on Delino DeShields. Rubnet Odor waiting on deck. Zimmerman has had a couple of fast innings, two seven pitch innings. He's also had two 22 pitch innings. Little pop up. Back a second. Kinsler to the grass. And he's called off by Avila. These Texas Rangers are loose tonight. Uh, that double play ball that we thought should have been turned. Cole Hamels had some fun with his teammates. And when he went to the dugout, he threw a towel at Andrews, who was talking to Beltre, and Beltre's probably saying, why didn't you guys turn that double play? So he must have thought there were two outs then, do you think? He, I thought he did. I thought he did. But they got out of it. Here is Rugnet Odor. Fly ball and a ground out for Odor. Rugnet uh, in his brief time in the big leagues has really hit well in this ballpark. And look at that. Well, we were talking about that pop he provides from that leadoff spot. Oh, my goodness. Man, that oh. thing is way out of here. He's a little bitty fella, too, Mario. Didn't seem to matter. Oh, my goodness. That is a long home run for Rugnet Odor, and it's 3 0. That might be the longest one that we've seen go in that direction so far this year. Did you see where that thing landed? I did. I did. Holy cats. I mean, that went up about more than halfway up the season. He gets after it. That's a four seam fastball top of the strike zone, that center cut. And boy, did he lean on it. Eh. Sounded loud, sounded long. 3 0 Texas. You know, I was talking about uh, Andrews last half inning. He uses a big bat. He does use a pretty big bat. It's the 35 inch bat, 32, 33 ounces. But so does Odor. And that's how far balls go when you use a heavier bat and you can generate some bat speed because of the condensity of the wood. Well, as you say, he's a little bitty guy, but he leads the team now with five home runs. I know. In that leadoff spot, man, he's been money. And this is a team that has Beltre and Fielder. Here's the ball missing low. 3 0 now on Mazzara. It's also a team that has been struggling on the road. They've lost seven of their last eight. And their offense is totally different and when you get them away from their home yard in Arlington. And he lost him, ball four. A four pitch walk to Mazzara. So again with two outs the Tigers give up a run. All three of the runs scored tonight by the Rangers with two outs. Here is Beltre. Ground out fly out. Oh and one on Beltre. Rangers just uh, gave Beltre an extension on his contract. He's got a couple more years to spend in a, uh, a Rangers uniform as we take a, a look at the numbers that he's put up against Tigers pitching in 84 games. Eesh. 330 with 13 long ones and 55 stakes. Two year extension was signed in April by Beltre, which will keep him in Rangers colors through 2018. He's hoping to end his career. In a Rangers uniform. Well, he's hit a lot of home runs, 416 in his career, which is 49th all time. And the guy he's chasing is Bernie Williams. He's 10 behind Bernie. A 
Lazar over at first base. Look at Miggy eye to eye. I know. Just huh? can't get over how big that kid is. Man, just 21 years old. Youngest player in the big leagues. Time called now as Zimmerman was ready to throw, and he has a long look in there at Larry Vanover. Boy, pitchers hate that. Beltre was given late time. Yeah, but if you notice, Beltre did not get out of that batter's box until he was given time. And yeah, we saw Mickey, was it on the last road trip? He right. Ste stepped out of the box? I believe it was the last home stand. Was it? Home stand before we left. Before, uh, actually, he was never given time. Right. And just stepped out of the box and was called out on strikes. The 2 1 pitch. 2 2 now on Beltre. And Brad made the comment that he felt because of Miggy's stature and what he had done in the game, he should have been given timeout, just like Adrian Beltre was given timeout right there. Here's the 2 2. Little pop up. Kinsler back to the grass. And that'll do it for the Rangers, not before they get another run on the Odor home run. You're watching Tigers baseball tonight, presented by Bell Tire. Now stream games live on your mobile device. Just go to the App Store, download the free Fox Sports Go app, and log in and stream Tigers baseball wherever you go. It's pretty simple. So take advantage of it. Well, the Tigers have not been able to take advantage of Cole Hamels, at least not to this point. It'll be Cassianos, McCann, and Ghosts against the Rangers lefty. First one is swung on and missed 0 and 1. Yeah, Cole Hamels has been first pitch strike on just about every Tiger hitter that has gone up there, but he is really. Uh, thrown different pitches uh, sometimes curveballs, sometimes elevated fastballs cut fastballs but for the most part he's worked aggressively inside uh, to all the right handed hitters not nearly that many change ups has he thrown today another breaking ball look at that thing on two he's pitching a little lollipop breaking ball drop this one in there nicely look at it come off the fingertips. Hamels, before he came over to the Rangers, spent 10 years with the Phillies and 10 really good years. He was 114 and 90 with the Phillies, but an ERA in the low threes. He won a, a world championship with the Fighting Fields, too. He did and was the uh, MVP of that series. Two and two on Castellanos.
fought that one off in on his hands. Here's an idea of what that cut fastball does. I mean, you see the ball coming down the middle, and if you're Cassianos, and all of a sudden from that angle that he throws from, he's able to get it that far inside for you to have to pull your hands inside just to get a piece of it. Oh, so we ain't gonna miss. Oh. Well, that is five strikeouts now for Hamels. He's thrown this pitch quite a bit. It's been his equalizer for the right handers. And he buried it around that back foot. Here's McCann. Fly out to the left fielder, his only at bat. James came back on the road trip, joined the team in Cleveland. After coming off the disabled list, was 0 for 5 on the trip. About 70% of the 66 total pitches that Hamels has thrown here today have been fastballs. Of the other 30%, something off speed. One ball and one strike. Bounced foul. One and two. We've seen a lot of uh, Tigers hitters uh, today and try to get out in front of that cut fastball to hit the ball sharply down into foul territory down toward the third base coach Dave Clark. Victor did it. Kensler did it. McCann has just done it. McCann battling. We're talking how it just doesn't seem that James yet has the timing back. We saw that, I think, in his first couple of at bats on the road trip. I would agree with that. He just doesn't look like he's uh, seen it as well as he's going to. The 1 2. 2 and 2 on McCann. He gets some more at bats under his belt. Anthony Ghost waiting on deck. Of course, McCann had to sit out a couple of weeks as that ankle healed. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. Six strikeouts now for Hamels. We check in with Johnny Kane, who has more on the Rangers lefty. Well, I'll tell you what, Mario, you know, in his last start against the Angels, uh, he didn't make it past the sixth inning. First time in his Rangers career he was unable to do that. I'm talking with Jeff Bannister today, you know, he had some command issues with his fastball, but uh, Bannister said to me, you know, the thing with him is strikeability, that's the key. If he's getting the good angle on that fastball, you know he's got his best stuff, and he's getting swings and misses on that changeup. Again, you know, we got the right Cole Hamels out there on the mound. And we knew runs would be a premium today, and Certainly hasn't disappointed to this point, guys. Well, he hasn't, not for Rangers fans, that's for sure. There are the numbers in that no decision against the Angels. He threw 87 pitches, but tonight, so far, it's been a clinic. Hey, there's Ghost attempting to bunt. He must have heard us talking about it last he time he was up. Must have. Speaking of the Angels, did you hear the devastating news that they have on uh, their star pitcher, Garrett Cole? Garrett Richards? Garrett Richards, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's uh, probably going to undergo Tommy John surgery. And uh, I think Andrew Haney was uh, injured as well. Right. So that's a couple of really big losses. And, and they were not a deep team to begin with in terms of their rotation. Mm -hmm. Jeff Weaver is certainly, or Jared Weaver, I should say, certainly not the guy that he was earlier in his Cole career. Cole Hamels absolutely filthy here tonight. Seven strikeouts for Cole Hamels. He has struck out the last four consecutive Tigers. And he is on his game as the Tigers go one. Two, three.
baseball as we check out what's happening around the game of baseball. Robinson Cano, four RBIs in a 6 3 win against Houston yesterday. All of a sudden, Robinson Cano is looking like the best second baseman in baseball again after having a, a difficult year last year. We saw Michael Brantley uh, take it to the Tigers in the last series, and Ben Zobras, four RBIs in an 8 6 win over Washington today. As the Cubs beat up on Max Scherzer. That's what's going on around the league. Jordan Zimmerman will go to work against Prince Fielder here in the sixth. Ooh, good pitch. The last couple of times he's gone up against Prince Fielder, he has elevated fastballs up in the strike zone. That time, real good breaking ball at the bottom of the zone thrown by Zimmerman. <laughs> and then they go back upstairs. <laughs> one and one. Fielder, 4 3 ground out, 5 3 ground out. Checked it inside. 2 and 1. Prince will not really try to beat the shift until he has two strikes on him, or unless there's runners in scoring position. Other than that, regardless of the shift, he's not trying to hit the ball in that direction. Two two on Prince. Fielder, then Desmond, and then Mitch Moreland here in the sixth for the Rangers. Here's the 2 2. High pop up, third base side, Castellanos. Prince can't lay off that fastball up around his net. It's not been good for him either. One go on time for a game break now, Justin White. They're doing that against uh, the very talented youngster in Kansas City's uh, rotation, Jordano Ventura. There's a slicing liner to right center field. Going to get down, base hit. He's going to try for two. Goes his throw. Safe at second base. Great hustling double there by Ian Desmond. And for those of you just joining us, we told you he played behind uh, Zimmerman the last six years. Zimmerman has thrown him four pitches, and he has swung at every last one of them. Ghost got to the ball in a hurry, didn't waste any time, but Desmond runs well, and he was sniffing two out of the batter's box. Ghost did everything right there. He got to it quickly, made a one hop throw right on the back. It's a great throw by Ghost. They do have Anthony playing deeper these days, a lot deeper. So again, a one out double. And now Mitch Moreland, who struck out in this situation his last time up. Bust him inside 1 0. Six hits now allowed by Jordan Zimmerman. If the uh, Royals lose that game tonight to the Indians and they're on their way to doing that, they would be a 500 team. They're struggling right now. Pickoff throw. Tigers tonight have managed only one hit. Here's the 1 0. Two balls, no strikes on Moreland. Elvis Andrews will be next. Rangers tonight with three doubles and a homer. Here's the 2 0. High fly ball into left field. Upton is under it. Here is our high speed pitch and as always it is brought to you by Xfinity and top fastball thrown by Zimmerman here today 
93 and he's gone as low as 77 uh, with his breaking ball. So here is Elvis Andrews. And of the 85 total pitches that uh, Zimmerman has thrown today he's about 50 50 in fastballs either four seam fastballs or cutters and off speed pitches. Andrews RBI double that was back in the second popped up his last time. Bender drops in for a strike on one. Andrews has watched his average drop about 50 points coming into this one. He was in a three for 22 slump. Here's the 0 1. Inside, one ball and one strike on Andrews. Hope you didn't unpack your luggage because you're going to have to pack it back up. Yep, that's a quick turnaround. Man. Although I got a couple extra days, so I'm going to meet you guys in Baltimore. I'm not going to D.C. You got studio work, right? Yeah. The uh, CMO and Rod show has turned into must see TV. You think so? Oh, there's no question. <laughs> I wish. There's no question. We can ask for a raise. Well, let's, <laughs> let's back off a little on that. <laughs> Now Zimmerman ready with the 1 1. Inside again, two balls, one strike. This might be one of those situations where you brought up the fact that uh, Andrews has been superior uh, this year with runners in scoring position. You have a runner in scoring position, you also have a base open, and you have the weak hitting. Uh, no disrespect, but Bobby Wilson is not known for his bat in the on deck circle. Slice to center field goes just about on his tracks. And so Zimmerman again pitching around a one out double. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth. Magic Moonshot presented by Magic Window. And we're going to turn back the uh, time a little bit. This is 1936. Hank Greenberg hit his first home run as a Detroit Tiger. And what a career he would go on to have with the Tigers. You know, black and white video back then. Great player. Great hitter. No high def either yet. Tigers history here the most home runs. Of course, Mr. Kaline at 399. Then Norm Cash, and Mr. Greenberg. Miguel Cabrera finds himself on that list as well with 274. Jose Iglesias leads it off. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Iglesias, Kinsler, and Avilas. Hamels with the 0 1. 
That'll be out of the reach of Mitch Moreland 0 2. Hamill struck out the side of the fifth. He has whiffed four consecutive Tigers batters. Down the stretch last year after being acquired by the Rangers, he went seven and one. And was a major reason why Texas went from being seven back when they acquired him to actually winning the division. I don't think he's uh, thrown one pitch over the heart of the plate so far here today and very few Tigers have even had good swings against Hamels. Cut fastballs four seam fastballs good curveball change up. You name it they've all been working. 13 of 18 in first pitch strikes. And a. Uh, Relatively sedate Tigers crowd because they've not had a lot to cheer about, just one hit. Thanks to Hamels. And also, what you're seeing is why they wanted to reacquire Bobby Wilson. You know, Wilson spent all spring training in the last couple of months with Texas last year. He spent about two, three weeks with the Tigers before being sent back to Texas. And because John Daniels, their general manager, knew how familiar he was with their pitching staff. Soft line drive caught on a leap by Andrews. One gone. We were talking about their defense. They've got a really good defense. They have not made an error in 12 straight games. The Texas Rangers defensive team. That'll bring up Ian Kinsler. You're talking about Bobby Wilson. I guess if there's one position on the field where you might be able to sacrifice a little bit of offense for a guy that knows what he's doing behind the plate, it's catcher. He's been known as a catch and throw guy. Not a lot of bat, but he can handle a pitching staff and he can throw. He has led Hamels beautifully so far here today. That one just missed. Kinsler had a single in the first, then stole a base, the 200th of his career. Bouncing ball to short Andrews. Two up two down. The majority of those stolen bases uh, came as a Texas Ranger for Ian Kinsler were twice. And he hit 30 home runs and 30 steals in a season. Here's Mike Avilas. A tough night so far for Avilas against Cole Hamels. A couple of strikeouts. And he came in with good numbers against Cole Hamels. A couple of home runs. Yeah, three for five. Two of them long balls. That's going to go foul. Nice catch. He picked it. Picked it with the glove. And his phone in his hand. Oh, with a glove. If you sit on that front row, you got to bring your glove, yeah, right? You have to. It's mandatory. Sprays that one the other way on two. Right in the way. The guy behind him was ready too. Got him a nice little Sunday hop. The guy behind him ticked. <laughs> he still looks a little chapped. <laughs> That's and my that ball. <laughs> That's exactly right. The guy with the hat. I don't like you very much right now. <laughs> oh boy. Here's the one two to Avilas inside two balls two strikes. Yeah, we'll see if he stays in hard against Avilas or further he goes back outside with a changeup. He hadn't thrown that many changeups today. Now it's full three and two. Hamble's trying to get another one two three inning. He's got Miguel Cabrera waiting on deck. And Avilos takes a walk. Two out base on balls. Hey this Sunday the Tigers host the Rangers at 110. Sunday Kids Day all kids 14 and under receive a free Mighty Miggy Children's Book courtesy of the Michigan State Police. Visit Tigers.com or call 866-66-TIGER.
Miggy is powerful in book fashion and in real life. He has a walk and a ground out of this game. We'll see if they can make Cole Hamels pay for the base on balls. And it missed inside 1 0. Three runs, six hits for the Rangers. No runs, one hit for the Tigers. Mickey did not like uh, that last uh, strike call by Larry Vanover. A little mini protest here by Miguel. With good reason. One and two on Cabrera. Miguel in his career has hit 412 home runs, which is more than any other. Venezuelan born player. Once in a generation, a player is Miguel. Did not chase. Two balls, two strikes. They don't come along very often with this kind of skill set. Can they get it to Victor Martinez? He's on deck. Hamels ready with the 2 2. Oh, he called him out. Strike three. Miguel Cabrera punched out by Larry Vanover, and that'll end the inning. Eight strikeouts for Cole Hamels. Here's our American Bank game summary. Elvis Andrews drove in the first run for Texas today with a double. Uh, that played at Moreland, who was on first base. And Cam Wilson going to the bottom of the strike zone to drive in another two-out run for Texas. That was in the second. And then Odor, uh, boy, he hit one. And we're still trying to get a distance on it. But it was a long, long way. When you hit him that far, you have to call an operator and ask for long distance. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that thing went uh, about three-quarters of the way up the bleachers and right. Here is the distance. We just got it 425. That's pulled foul down the third baseline. Remember the old rotary phones when you wanted to make a long distance call? You have to dial zero to get the operator to call long distance. I remember, man. Those rotary phones were big when I was a kid. <laughs> How times have changed. Bobby Wilson leading it off. There's a bouncing ball to third. Easy play there for Nick. Wilson is out, one gone. That'll bring up Delino to Shields. 
I wonder if you stuck a rotary phone in front of, I don't know, a kid that's maybe seven or eight years old today and asked him to use it if he knew how to use it. No chance. They got no shot. It's like an eight track. What do I do with this? They got no chance. If it's not a PS4 or a <laughs> phone, they got no shot. The Shields looks at a strike on the outside corner on one. Meanwhile, I had somebody, uh, somebody tweeted me. We were talking about, uh, you know, I didn't quite know where the PlayStations were still in a couple right. of days ago. Exactly, Cleveland. a couple days ago. Uh, somebody texted me and said that uh, uh, their son said that I, I make myself sound old when I sound, say PlayStation and you don't say PS4. Oh. Well, you know what? We are old, Brian. I mean, that's. Yeah, we are. Too. It is what it is. Here's the 0-2. Checked it foul. So you can't say PlayStation. It's got to be PS. Yeah, it's got to be cool. PS4. PS4. Yeah. They're cutting down everything. Like, yeah. every, everything's abbreviated. Yeah, it's an acronym now. It's like player of the game. McDonald's POG. POG. <laughs> you know. <laughs> that one just missed one and two. Rupnet Odor waiting on deck. We're in the seventh. Three nothing Texas. Bouncer back up the middle. Iglesias to his left. Two up, two down. Hey, support breast health awareness and pick out the park this Sunday, Mother's Day, May 8th, when the Tigers host the Rangers at 110. Get a ticket plus a special pink out the park t-shirt by purchasing at tigers.com slash pink out. So with two gone now, here's Odor. Rugnet hit that long home run his last time up. Five homers now for Odor to lead the Rangers. Is there a second baseman in the game that has the kind of power that he has? I cannot think of anybody second baseman that can hit a ball that far. Cano maybe? He would be the only one. There's a base hit to right. Take a look at his numbers though when he does lead off. And batting 308 as a leadoff hitter. Then he bats anywhere from two through nine. He's only batting 224. But 308 with some power. I'm trying to think of other second basemen that can hit a ball that far. I'm not coming up with any. No. So the Rangers have their seventh hit. And that's going to bring up. Nomar Mazzara. This guy physically reminds me a little bit of Ruben Sierra. It's a nice comparison. Sierra. Youngest player in the big league, just 21 years old, just turned 21 in April. You know, his mother and uh, father they got him some English lessons when he was about 12 or 13 years old. In Dominican Republic because they were told that their son had a chance to go to the United States and be a really good baseball player so they wanted to make sure that their son uh, knew English. We heard that story about who was that Correa? Correa Carlos Correa but Correa was a third grader at the time when his parents got him English lessons and he asked for them because he knew he'd play in the big league and he wanted to do his own interviews. Yeah. How about that for that's a third grader. That's pretty cool. That's also some pretty good confidence. G. Lamont was on the telephone in uh, contact with the Tigers bullpen, which is starting to stir now. Mazzaro didn't grow. He didn't grow up poor either, though, in Dominican. I mean, his father was a Coast Guard in Dominican Republic, so he grew up, you know, having a lot more than a lot of the kids that come from Dominican to come to the United States. Well, he got off to a fabulous start. Rookie of the month in April. Got a walk tonight, otherwise 0 for 2. In the air toward left field. Upton is on the run. Still coming in fair territory for the final out. No runs a hit. One man left coming up. The Consumers Energy seventh inning stretch.
the bottom of the seventh inning here at Comerica Park. Tigers have not been able to do anything against Cole Hamels, who has eight strikeouts tonight, and that ties a season high. This has been one of the uh, best pitch games so far that I've seen against the Tigers. They've had some other pitching performances that have been good against them, but as far as the quality of pitches and the swings they've gotten all night long against Hamels, this is the best pitching performance I've seen this year. Tigers have one hit, and that was the Kinsler single to lead off the first. Bloop single. Yeah, that's true. And they've also had a couple of walks along the way, but not very many base runners tonight. Martinez up in Castellanos against the lefty. Two balls, no strikes on Victor. Victor is 0 for 2, fly ball, reaching out a fielder's choice in his last at bat. Pulled foul. And they've been taking pot shots down there at uh, Dave Clark. Hamels has gotten them to do that all night long, whether that be the cut fastball uh, that he has thrown in there that everybody's trying to get out in front of because they don't want to get jammed, or that slow breaking ball that they're out in front of that as well. And he does it by design. Here comes a changeup. Two and two on Martinez. Both clubs trying to stop a three game losing streak here tonight. Rangers came in in second place, two and a half out in the West. Up to. Now the 2 2 in on his hands. Let's see if it finds the seats, and it will. Three or four rows back. Tigers haven't seen many left handed starters this year, anyway. It's been a while since we've seen one. Jake Diekman, the left hander, warming up. I'm trying to think of the last lefty starter we've seen. Was it Keiko? It might be. I don't think anybody since. A's didn't have any lefties, did they? Uh, I can't that. think of it. Three and two. Rangers have three lefties in their bullpen. Deakman warming up. We saw Sabathia, but was Sabathia after? Keichel or before Keichel? No, that was before, I think. Yeah, because they came in early. Right. First home stand, as a matter of fact, right. opening day. Meanwhile, Justin Wilson, the left hander, warming up for the Tigers. Victor again waiting on a 3 2. Just got a piece of it, and he'll stay alive. Little chopper to the shortstop, Andrews on the charge. And one out. That'll bring up Upton. Upton a strikeout and a fly out. And while we have a, a quick second, I'd like to send out some just get well wishes to a good buddy of ours, Mario. Jim Stapleton had his left hip replaced. Really? Yesterday, yeah. James Stapleton had that left hip replaced, and the surgery was great. We've been texting back and forth a little bit yesterday, so uh, he'll be up and walking and playing golf again pretty soon. Here is Upton. Keating knows a little bit something about that. Oh, yeah, he? he does. Jim might be running sprints before we know it. Yeah. One ball and no strikes on Upton. And it's low. Two balls and no strikes. 
So Hamels now at 104 pitches. You would think the way that he's been able to handle the Tigers only giving up one hit, he wouldn't be over 100 pitches here in the seventh. That one just missed, and now it's gone to 3 0. One oh six is his season high, and here it is. One oh six. There's a strike call. Now it's three and one on Upton. Doug Brocale, the pitching coach, former Tiger, writing some notes. Here's the three one offering. Did Jeff Russell end up getting manager of the year last year in the American League? Bannister? Bannister, excuse me. Yes, he did. That's what I thought. He just looks like a manager, doesn't he? Yeah, he did a terrific job. No you Darvish. No Holland at the beginning of the year. AJ Hinch finished second in that voting and Paul Molitor third. third. John Gibbons the Blue Jays fourth. In fact Bannister uh, won it by a pretty wide margin 112 to 82 over Hinch. He worked underneath Clint Hurdle. In the Pittsburgh Pirates organization. He was a lifer over there. Texas got himself a good manager good leader. Three and two on Upton. Off the end of the bat, popped him up. Moreland in foul ground. Two outs. Well, fans, party suites for all Tigers games are on sale now. All party suites include $300 in food credit and parking. Select suites include visit from Tigers alumni. Visit tigers.com slash groups or call 313-471-BALL. Here's Castellanos. Fly out strikeout for Castellanos. The base runners against Hamels tonight the single by Kinsler in the first walk to Miggy in the fourth walk to Avilas in the sixth. That would be it. Castellanos looking for a base hit uh, to extend his eight game hitting streak. Tigers had a few streaks going tonight. Uh, yeah. Justin had seven. Cole Hamels has done something about all that. One and two. Open in. Meanwhile, Zimmerman gave up two in the second and one in the fifth. He's allowed a homer tonight to Rupnet Odor. It's 3 0 Texas. And the 2 2. Got him on strikes, and that is all for the Tigers. Nine strikeouts for Cole Hamels. You're watching Tigers baseball tonight presented by Bell Tire.
Tigers score three to nothing. Only one hit for the Tigers tonight. Mario and Pemba with Rod Allen back here at the ballpark. And well, I guess it's only one thing to talk about tonight, and that would be Cole Hamels. His stuff has been dirty tonight. I mean, some of the best stuff I've seen this year uh, thrown at the Tigers from a left-hander. I mean, the fastball cutting it at 89 to 92. Real good breaking ball. Not that many change-ups of pitching. Very aggressively inside. He's been real good. You know, it really is a confounding sometimes, Rod, when you think about this team. They were really good in Minnesota, and I'm talking about offensively. They were slowed down in Cleveland, and again tonight, another another slow night. You know, talking to Wally Jordan, he can't figure it out either. Uh, the one thing that you do know is that the Tigers have an outstanding hitting team. They've done it, a lot of the guys, and they will do it again. Uh, they've just run into some decent pitching. Uh, they ran into Kluber a couple of days ago, who was a real good pitcher in Cleveland. And Cole Hamels today was outstanding. But uh, while he's not panicking, nor is a lot of the Tigers hitters, but you would love to see a little bit more consistency. Here is Adrian Beltre to lead things off. There's a strike called on Beltre. He'll be followed by Fielder and then Desmond. That'll get back out of play. Zimmerman still out there, 102 pitches. Really, uh, certainly has pitched well enough to win tonight. Tiger system not gotten him any runs. Fast That's right. Got him that, any hits. That's right. Only one hit in this game for the Tigers. Beltre is 0 for 3. Popped him up. Went after a breaking ball. The shortstop Iglesias to the grass. One away. And Beltre started doing this a couple of years ago. They called it the wedding proposal. He gets down on one knee. Did she say yes or did she say no? She said no that time. <laughs> a little pop up to the shortstop. Bring up Prince Fielder. Shift out against Fielder. And he pops it up. Third base side, Castellanos in foul ground. And Prince is 0 for 4 tonight. Two gone. Tomorrow, MLB on FS1 is back as the Rangers take on your Tigers in a game that can only be seen on FS1. The action begins at 12.30 Eastern on FS1 or watch it live. On Fox Sports Go. Kenny Albert, Tom Verducci with the play by play action tomorrow. Here is Ian Desmond. He has swung at every pitch today. He has seen five pitches and he has swung at every last one of them. And he has a couple of doubles to his credit. In his last two at bats, he doubled twice with only one out. The Rangers stranded him both times. He was in a two for 17 skid prior to the two doubles here today. Here's the 2 Oh. Zimmerman thought he had it. So did a few of the Tigers infielders who were a step back to the dugout. Now the 1 2. Little chopper to the shortstop. Iglesias. That'll be a 1 2 3 8. So we go to the bottom of the eighth in search of some hits.
Here's our 1-800-CALL-SAM call of the game. Cole Hamill just kind of had his way against Tiger Spatness all night long. 15 of 24 in first pitch strikes. And they were swinging that bat today, coming up empty all night long. He had nine punch outs in the game, gave up one hit, which was a bloop single way back in the very first inning. Got ourselves a wall side windows pitching change. It'll be the left hander Jake Diekman coming on. Diekman comes in in his 14th game of the year. He has six holds. He's looking for number seven here this evening. He's got a good ERA 279, 11 strikeouts, and just three walks. Well, Cole Hamels was not the only acquisition at the trading deadline last year. So was Diekman, who came over from the Philadelphia Phillies. Did a really good job for them. He sure did. He's got a power arm, fastball 95, 96, also a slider, an occasional changeup, but pretty much hard stuff coming out of the hand of Beekman. Here come the Tigers now in the eighth. James McCann leading it off. Anthony Ghost due next, but it looks like Saltolamacchia has moved to the on deck circle. McCann is 0 for 2, fly out, strike out. Swing and a miss. 95 from the lefty Diekman. Hamels goes seven, strikes out nine in the game. A season high. Man, Deepman looks like he could be absolutely filthy on left handers and right handers. Swing and a miss. Take a look at how he throws this ball across his body. He steps over it toward first base. And once he starts to deliver, go ahead and run it. And once he gets, he steps toward first base and throws across his body. And that would be a very difficult angle for a left hander or right hander. Deakman last year down the stretch for the Rangers had an ERA just a touch over two. 20 strikeouts in 21 and two thirds innings. Yeah, it's been kind of surprising this year that their bullpen has struggled. I mean, Deakman's doing well, but by and large, they've had a struggling bullpen this year. And McCann strikes out. That is the 11th strikeout of Tigers hitters today. Excuse me. So here's Saltolamacchia to pinch hit for Ghost. Tigers still have JD Martinez and Romine on the bench. 3 0 Texas. If Saltalamakia gets on base, more than likely Romine might pinch run for him. He's down in the Tigers' dugout getting loose. Waving a miss, 0 2. Here's a question Hamels gave up only one hit in this game. Right. That was the single to Kinsler. Would he still be out there right now if he hadn't given up that hit and had a no hitter going? Yeah, I think he probably would have given him one or two more innings, maybe. I think Cole Hamill's the veteran guy. Swing and a miss, and Saltalamaki is out of there. There's 11 strikeouts now for Rangers pitching. Hamill's was masterful tonight. It's up to the bullpen now to see if they can hold it for the Rangers. Man, they got him under control, man, for the next three years after the 20. The 2019 season. That was a nice deal they made for him. Well, it sure was. They're going to get you Darvish back here soon too. They're going to have a real nice one and two. Strike one on Iglesias. He is 0 for two. The 0 1. Slice to the second baseman and gobbled up there by Odor. It's going to be a 1 2 3 inning for Diekman. Eight in the books here at Comerica Park, still 3 0 Texas.
find themselves down by three as we go to the top of the ninth inning. Three runs, seven hits for the Rangers. No runs, one hit for the Tigers. And lefty Justin Wilson in a wall side windows pitching change. Yeah, Wilson needed some work. Uh, he did not get up uh, in that Cleveland series where the Tigers dropped all three. So Brad taking the uh, liberty of getting him out there and getting him some work just in case he needs to use Justin uh, tomorrow afternoon. 15 strikeouts, only two walks so far this year for Wilson. Andrew Romine will come into the game now, replacing Ghost, the pinch hit for Ghost. The play in center field. Here is Mitch Moreland to get things started. Moreland, Andrews, and Wilson in the ninth inning. Moreland fouls it back out of play on one. They play the shift on against Mitch Moreland. Single strikeout flyout. The uh, Rangers have only scored in two separate innings tonight. They got two in the second, one in the fifth against Zimmerman. Little bouncer towards second base. Kinsler charging. Mark Mario, I know you're a lot like me that when you were watching this last year in the ALDS when Texas was playing against the Toronto Blue Jays you felt for Elvis Andrews he's a great player man, and usually makes all the plays but he had a nightmarish seventh inning against the Toronto Blue Jays and of course Toronto would go on to win that series but I just I felt bad for him watching that that day. Well it's a great example of how cruel the game of baseball can be I mean here's Andrews one of the top shortstops in the game. And all it takes is one inning on the biggest stage. And that's going to be knocked out by Kinsler, who almost made a great leaping play. Yeah, it would have been a really good play, but Elvis will get a base hit there. But, you know, I, I, I heard some interesting comments that Elvis made when he got back to spring training because everybody wanted to know how he would respond to what happened to him his last game of the 2015 season. He said he really grew up from that. He really learned a valuable lesson. He learned a lot about himself going through what he went through there in that particular seventh inning and he said he learned life lessons that are going to help him in the future. He's glad it happened to him while he was so young something like that. Well if it happens in a uh, normal game of the month of June you probably forget about it in a week but boy that had to stay with him the entire offseason. Yeah, he said that it just made him a much better person. He said it didn't feel good going through it don't get me wrong but he said it made him a better person having that kind of adversity. And knowing that one of the reasons why your team went home is because you were poor in that particular inning. Yeah. That that does not kill you makes you stronger, right? Yeah. Here's the 0 1 pitch to Wilson. One ball, one strike. One for three for Wilson. He caught a wonderful game, though. I mean, he caught a wonderful game here today. It was just a Tiger a couple of days ago. And Justin Wilson throws back to first base. Zimmerman tonight threw 108 pitches, a season high. Gives way to Wilson here in the ninth. Now the 1 1. I'm not sure he can get up any higher than that. He almost made a spectacular play. Andrews at first. The Tigers, by the way, in the bottom of the ninth will have the top of the order. Kinsler, Aphilis, and Cabrera do up, and there's more activity in the bullpen. Dyson and Tallison. Both right handers. Tallison, their closer, has nine saves. 
should it remain three nothing when we get to the bottom of the ninth more than likely he comes in. Here's the one two. Foul back out of play. Delano to Shields waiting on deck. Tigers themselves in danger of falling to 500 if they fail to come back tonight. That'll bounce in. And nice block there by McCain. And keeping that ball in front of him. Time right here. They don't want to give uh, Andrews any ideas of stealing second. He has stolen once, he's been caught three times. And there he goes. Line to center field, it'll drop, base hit. And all the way to third goes Andrews, and now the Rangers have something going here with one out. Uh, Wilson's second hit of the game. And Bobby Wilson's had himself some type of game here tonight against his former teammates. Two hits, an RBI. And now the Shields will step in. Delano tonight is 0 for 3. Ground ball, fly out, strike out. Yeah, you always have to, at least in the back of your mind, be thinking about a possible squeeze. You can only have a three run lead here in the ninth. And it's bunted to first base. Cabrera's going to come home, and they've got Andrews in a rundown. Castellanos runs it back, and Miggy will make the tag, and that'll leave runners at second and third. That was not your suicide squeeze. That was called a safety squeeze, whereas if you're Andrews and you're the base runner on third, once you see that the shield has bunted the ball, then you take off. It's not the kind of suicide play where the runner takes off first. And the ball was bunted so hard uh, by the shields toward Miguel uh, that Miggy was able to get the ball to McCann. They were able to get the out. 3-2-5-3 three, three on the put out of Andrews. Second and third down with two outs. And Odor slices one to left center field. That's going to get down and score two runs. And every single run the Tigers have given up here tonight have been with two outs. And Odor has had some kind of game. He's driven in three. Looked like a cut fastball slider that uh, Odor stayed on very nicely coming out of a left hander's hand uh, to keep that shoulder locked and loaded in that kind of concentration. It's a good at bat by Odor. A cut fastball 91 miles an hour. Much different ball game now. Five to nothing here in the ninth. That is the tenth hit for the Rangers offense. Rich Doobie coming out to talk to Wilson. And it's a Rangers team that uh, really came into Comerica Park struggling on the road offensively. They got it going tonight. Let's take a look at the big boys big play of the game. It happened earlier in this contest. It was against Jordan Zimmerman. It was Odor in the batter's box and man did he turn on one. He hit it three quarters up the way. The stands in right field. The 
Zara sends a ground ball to second. That should end the inning as Kinsler throws him out. And the side retired. Not before they get two more. We go to the bottom of the ninth. On Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be when it's time. Come to Comerica. By your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Visit ChevyDetroit.com to see why Chevy drives the Motor City. And by Wallside Windows. We can do that. We are the factory. Last call time for the Tigers. We go to the bottom of the ninth. It is 5 0. The Rangers have the lead here in game one. A lot of work to be done here. The Tigers have managed only one hit tonight, and they will face a new pitcher. Sam Dyson comes on. And Dyson also did a very nice job down the stretch for Texas last year, and he was a valuable member in them getting to the postseason. Off to another good start here. A 2.08 ERA, 11 strikeouts, six walks, the league hitting 227 against the hard throwing right hander. Top of the order coming up. Kinsler Avilas and then Cabrera. Kinsler singled in the bottom of the first and that is Bennett in the hit column. Tigers tonight have been out hit 10 to 1. First one rides inside at 96 and it catches the corner much to the chagrin of Kinsler. 0 and 1. Dyson goes 6 1, 205. Tampa, Florida, his hometown. Ripped down the left field line. Fair ball. Little bang off the sidewall. Kinsler is on his way to second, and he has both Tigers hits tonight. Finally, something to cheer about. Kinsler turned on a good fastball thrown by Dyson. Five doubles is here now for Ian. Here is Avilas. Tigers need to start stringing some hits together. They've got the meat of the lineup coming up. And Avilas looks at a strike. Two strikeouts and a walk. All three of those advance against the starter, Cole Hamels. Here's the 0 1. Bouncing ball back up the middle. Andrews has it, models it. Everybody is safe. Yeah, 
and the door is opening slightly now for the Tigers. That's the first error that they've made the last 13 games. Pretty routine. Yep, didn't watch it into the glove. Now here comes Cabrera, two on, nobody out. Second error of the year for Andrews. Miggy looks at a ball high and away, 1 0. Cabrera, a walk, a ground down, a strikeout. Here's the 1 0. Broken bat, roller toward third. Beltre to second one, relay, double play. Kinsler scores, but the Rangers certainly will take that exchange. Two outs, a run in, five to one. He's going to leave it up to Victor Martinez. Victor is 0 for 3. A little bit outside, one ball, no strikes. Tigers finally get a run on the board here, but a big double play thrown by Dyson. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Bouncing ball right side. Back to the outfield grass. Odor with the shift throws him out, and that's the ball game. Tigers get a run here in the ninth, but they are stymied this evening by Cole Hamels, who pitched his best game of the season. The Tigers managing only two hits. And your final tonight from Comerica 5 1. We'll be back.